Hello everyone, it is Wednesday, February 2nd, 2011. My name is John, I'm the guy in the picture here, and this is my website. I'm going to show you guys how to use CSS3 media queries, how to make your existing site with only probably about a few hours of effort tops, how to take your existing website and use a little bit of CSS to easily make your site much more usable with CSS3 media queries. And here on caniuse.com, which is great. I have it set up here just so that you can see the browser rendering engine support. As you can see here, it's not implemented until Internet Explorer 9, which is fine, but the point is mainly for mobile devices and lower screen resolutions. So we have Firefox 3.5, Safari 4, Opera, uh, I think it's actually like 10.0 it's implemented, maybe 9.6, I'm not sure offhand. You could see that actually, to see the actual code, before I go into this, you could go to my site, go to the CSS area of my web section, so my site section area, and on the page I have CSS3, and then all the code, you could just open, click on the link. Now this is for the rendering engine, so Gecko is the rendering engine of Firefox, KHTML is the rendering engine of Conqueror. Uh, I have Presto as a ring engine for Opera, though I have it set to um, Opera there. Trident is the rendering engine to Internet Explorer. WebKit is the rendering engine to Safari and yes to Chrome. But when you go to my site and you see, if you go to my site and you see, you're using Chrome, you're going to notice the rendering engine is, the browser is detected as Safari. Well, that's because the rendering engine is developed by Apple, which Apple develops the Safari browser. And therefore, when you see this, it's because I detect the rendering engine, but to make it simple for most people, I tell you the browser that is most associated with the rendering engine. That's why you will see Safari detected in place of Chrome. That is by design. So we're going to go back here. So you can see the code here. Uh, the code is specific to the rendering engine. So here, when you open up a link in, in uh, Firefox, this is Firefox 4.0, I have it so you could see the actual code that is associated with the version of the rendering engine. So you can see here, border radius is associated with Gecko 1.0, which we're talking wicked ode, like Netscape 6.0 and older. You can see Firefox 1.5, we have multiple column layouts. We can have, so all the CSS3 is in here. And as you can see here, this is what you guys are going to be looking for. And it's very simple. It's like JavaScript functions almost. Of at media, you have your condition, maximum width. This is the number of pixels. And then you're going to choose the CSS rules. This is very, very simple. Super simple. So you're going to have your, say, ID selectors. You could have, you know, here's this column, he comma here. So you got have multiple selectors, and then you're gonna say, "Oh, this is gonna be what you're gonna adjust." This is super simple once you use an example. So you could have an example at media max width, and you'd say, for example, just the body element. You could say the background color, and then you could have the second option, and that could be in in place of this. You got the body element. Uh, without anything else, you could do the background color and you could have that set to something else. So as you resize the image, but you guys want to see this in action. So uh, I can show you this. Safari is easiest to adjust this. So what you guys are going to watch for, first off, is the number of columns. Because the, this is another CSS3 feature. And the point of having multiple columns is so you don't read across the entire page and then go back to the beginning. So instead, you just read across one column, you go to the next. It's a lot shorter, it's a lot easier, it's just like a newspaper. So the number of columns is going to be reduced. You're also going to notice that the menu items are going to eventually collapse. You're also going to notice that the utility op uh, menus here are going to disappear. The pagination links, the number of links here, is going to disappear. Uh, so here's my... Uh, I just implemented this feature, so I have a blog item on here. And again, to see this in action, you'd go to the web section, CSS, and then under CSS, you go to the CSS3 page. So, 
with no further ado, let's go ahead and start resizing this. So three columns, three columns of content. Watch those columns. Two columns. Three columns. Two columns. That is explicitly done only by the CSS3 media queries. This is very useful. My site, I could not have this working at lower than 800 by 600 unless I implemented these CSS media queries. I now have my site working by design with a minimum down to a minimal width of 300 pixels. So I will show you that in uh, in Firefox. I have Firefox 3. Let's do this. Let's resize. Actually resize by 320. Boom. So this is what we can expect. So we go back to Safari and we could see that eventually we're going to have one column. Boom. Two columns, one column. Now the next thing we're going to notice is that the amount of space here for these menus is going to run out. So what's going to happen is these the, the width of these menus is going to collapse. So the menus will take up less space and we can retain them. So those menus are now have taken up a lot, little less space. Yes, I know that's a bug. There's so much that can go wrong with this. Now all this, by the way, if you right-click in Firefox, you view the page info. This is all XHTML. There's tons of CSS3 on here. So remember, when you go to the CSS3 files, and they're specific to the rendering engine. So there's no, there are no errors in the error console. Now, if I clear that, because that's, I don't, I don't have any extensions on here to keep the the errors from loading here. Once this loads, you're going to see there are no errors no errors at all and you can do this in Safari so the error console and where we can resize this so when I reload the page right here in front of you live on my site we reload the page there are no errors so if we go to for example Google boom errors alright we can go to Yahoo Boom. Errors. Okay. Uh, I don't know why Yahoo has naked Indians on their page, but whatever. So anyway, we're going to go back to, uh, I can show you here. Obviously, I just showed you Firefox 3.6. We could see here that it is also going to adjust in Firefox. It's just a lot easier to have mouse control over Safari. And as you can see here, in Opera. And Opera 11 will hopefully have multi-column support. Opera 11.5, that is, with the next version of the Presto rendering engine. And as you can see here, again, in Opera, it's going to adjust. So we're going to go back to Safari. And what you'll also notice, notice here, watch the width of the sidebar. It actually got larger there. smaller, larger. And the point of that is to make these links on the page here increasingly uh, to, to remain have them remain useful. Otherwise, if they become squashed, you can't use them, even on a mobile device. Well, you can now use them on a mobile device. So again, there are no JavaScript frameworks. This is all pure CSS3 with the animations, the hover effects, and everything. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start we, um, these menus are going to start disappearing. Now, the first one I'm going to get rid of is the gamer menu because it has the least relevant information. I know some of my my gaming and PC enthusiast fans are going to be like, "Why'd you do that?" Also, these utility links are going to disappear, and the reason for that, if we go ahead and we open up a new link. We go here. You see, the menus are going to overlay, but I generally try to keep those there as much as possible. So that's subjective to your taste on how, how much width I would leave that there open for. So, and as, you, as we watch, more of these menus are going to disappear. So now the anime menu disappeared at the very at the, at the left here. These are all alphabetic, alphabetically ordered. And next we're going to get rid of the gamer menu there.
the gallery menu. The philosophy menu. And at this point, well, oops. So at this point, I think I'm pretty close to my, oh, that's all it's going to allow me to resize horizontally. But there is a point, and it's a little bit more difficult to adjust this, there is a point where the site just becomes completely unusable, and as you can see here. So there is a point, I only went so far, but 320 is the maximum, uh, the minimal width my site now supports versus 800 by 600. So again, if you go to my site, this is a link, these links will open in a new, new page. Some of the browsers may do something funky and ask you to save the files or whatever. But these are by the rendering engine. And how these work, how this works, how my site loads a CSS3, is if you, in Firefox, Firefox 3.6 and older, I, I think it is, the links are the links for the source is, are linked. So what you'd want to go is you want to go to this line here, script slash index.js. And at the very top is this init function. This is JavaScript. All of this JavaScript, every single line is written by me. Maybe a like, mean like 10 to 20 lines throughout the entire thing are copied and pasted from someone else and highly adjusted. But for the mass majority of this code, all of this code, the vast majority of it is written by me for my site. And this is not all of the JavaScript code. But all you need to know for the CSS3, boom, all this here is object detection. I detect the object uh, support, so to see if it's not defined. If it's not defined, I say, this is the browser, this is the browser version. I rate the browser. So, for example, in our Explorer, 6.0, severe. Of course, you guys, you're watching this video, you know what I'm talking about. And then, if you go, if you Go through the, the the function here. You'll be able to see how I call a different style sheet. There should be maybe if I highlight this all. There should be somewhere a style sheet that I load somehow through the. Here we go. This is how I do it. I call a style sheet function. So what we do? We copy this. We're going to find, look at the bottom of the screen here, function, space, style sheet. And this is going to be ETV. If we go back to the page here, it's going to be the engine, what kind of style sheet we're loading, a CSS3 style sheet, or a patch, and then the version number. So if we, again, engine, type, and the version. So ETV. So you guys are welcome to copy and paste this code because there is so much junk code. This, my site will load in under 10 seconds on dial-up on a 36K modem. So, heck, if you go to the front front of the page, boom, dial-up. You could also use this for mobile if you want. So that's that. I hope you guys have found this video on how to use CSS3 media queries to reduce the aggravation of designing pages at lower resolutions for mobile devices and for folks who are still for some reason using their their computers like 800 by 600 and it's very useful it's very easy if your code is clean and you are not using frameworks you're not using junk like WordPress and all that other junk and you're you're building your sites pure XHTML with some CSS and JavaScript and you're doing it without all that junk, it's going to be the absolute easiest to do this. Feel free to go through all my code, look at the source code, to go through everything. You can absolutely, you can validate this. If you find something that's not valid, let me know. This code is all valid. It's all served as XHTML 1.1. So, Feel free to comment below. If you swear or do anything else, I will remove your comments. Comments are only appear once they are approved. And keep it on topic. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, no in-depth, how do I do this 
questions specifically, but I will try to give you guys a good general direction of how to follow things. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys around.